All right, I am Jim Angstadt. I am the Director of Public Works and Engineering. Um, I'd like to welcome everybody tonight. This is the um, follow-up to a meeting from June of 2022, uh, where we had um, met with uh, the public to go over kind of what, what we would anticipate or what you were looking for from Third Avenue, Third Avenue improvements. Um, so, a couple of things, welcome. Um, meeting agenda, we're gonna go over some real quick some ground rules for everybody. Um, we'll be undertaking a brief presentation. Um, we will take general questions via cards. Um, we're not gonna ask you to stand up and, and read. The, we're already having trouble with the mic. Um, so there's cards in the back, you can put a question in, we will read them. The follow up to that will be an open house wherein we're, if I can get through the presentation, we'll have about an hour to go over uh, we've got a plot in the back, and then we've got staff available in the back if they could stand up. They are here to answer questions, and we'll be, we'll be here for till at least seven. Um, and then uh, we'll wrap it up at that point. So it's just some ground rules. We want to start and end on time. Uh, we ask you to be respectful. Uh, communication, respect for all. We'd like you to make sure you li listen so we can understand the issues going, that we're gonna be talking about. Um, we'd ask that you assume the best of intentions. We're also asking to, to stay on topic. We, there, there's a lot of things going on in and around the Third, third Avenue corridor. Um, we're focusing on some of the projects in the central area as well as kind of the Third Avenue improvements uh, that we're, we're gonna be proposing you're seeing on the, on the plot in the back. Um, we ask that you debate the issue. Uh, if you get into a little bit of a heated discussion with staff, um, and we'll also ask, um, you know, be, be fully pr participative. Ooh, that's a tough one. Um, listen, listen, keep your side conversations to a minimum if you could, so that you can get the, during the presentation, so we can get the best information out to you. Um, si please silence your cell phones, and if you gotta take a call, we just ask you either go to the back of the room or you exit the room. Um, we're gonna provide uh, kind of some real quick brief project updates on some of the projects that are in the area off of Third Avenue, including the Boston Avenue Bridge replacement, the Price Park Tank replacement, the Kaufman Street Busway, and then we'll get into more detail in the Third Avenue improvements. Just starting off with the Boston Avenue uh, Bridge replacement um, down uh, just west of Left Hand Brewery um, on Boston Avenue. Um, the project is uh, a component of the Resilient St. Vrain project. Um, wherein we're going to be replacing the bridge, expanding it, so it'll carry, the stream will be able to carry a 100-year storm. Um, design is currently complete. The bidding of the project is complete. We're lining up our funding for uh, a contractor, and we anticipate an award shortly, and with construction scheduled to start in June of this year, and anticipating a construction time of about 18 months. Um, what you will see is, currently you'll see some lane shifts on Boston Avenue. Um, you always, with any project, um, you're going to hear some construction noise uh, as you're in and about that area of the, of the project. Um, trail closures and detours will continue, um, but we anticipate at this time that Boston Avenue will remain open. The Price Park tank replacement is currently underway. Um, the estimated completion at, of that project is spring of 2024. Um, construction work is weekdays. Um, seven to seven. Uh, there has been some Saturday work when the contractor has fallen farther behind. That is by approval of the city only. Um, currently they're on schedule so we don't anticipate for the coming in the summer that they'll be working on, week on weekends. Um, traffic impacts, we've seen some more tra truck traffic on Long's Peak, a uh, little bit on Sunset Street. Um, the truck traffic is, is laid out to go north on Long's Peak to 9th Avenue or west on, or I'm sorry, north on Sunset to 9th Avenue or west on Longs Peak. Um, traffic is, we're not allowing any trucks to go east of Sunset. Um, Longs Peak is currently, in the eastbound direction, is currently um, a pet, temporarily been adjusted uh, to make room for the contractor's activities. Uh, at the end of the project, that road will be rebuilt to its original configuration. Um, again, you're gonna hear some construction noise. Uh, what's important is that uh, the contractor's been working all winter to get uh, the parking lot area completed so that Sunset Pool and the golf course can remain open during the remainder of construction. 
Um, we've had a couple of questions about the original water tank that's out there. That water tank will remain in place. Um, that is currently not being used by our water, um, our water group. It is, uh, but it does have some communications uh, facilities in it. So um, that will remain. Coffin Street Busway. Um, the project is currently in design, but we are anticipating completion in the middle of this year. Um, currently, uh, construction schedule, there is currently water line work going on on Kaufman Street. Um, that was a component of last year's projects. Um, they're finishing it up this year. Uh, we do anticipate that uh, we will be bidding this project late 2023 with construction to follow. Anticipating completion of that construction in late 2025. Um, Phasing of the work is still to be determined. Um, we may, that completion date may accelerate if we can phase it and complete part of the project earlier. That will be up once we have a contractor on board, we will be working with them to uh, determine if that is viable. Traffic impacts, there will be some road closures and detours on Kaufman. Uh, and again, you're gonna hear some construction noise in and around the construction site. So I wanted to get into Third Avenue. I um, want to talk real quick about the work effort that we are looking at. Um, the limits of Third are extending from Main Street to Sunset Street. The original components of all these projects were asset management projects. Uh, the blue lines kind of on the area off of Third on Kaufman are reflecting of all of the work we've been undertaking in the last year or so. Um, a lot of that is some of the water line replacement that was done on third last year, as well as the third, the line running up gay. Um, we are anticipating some storm drainage improvements. Um, currently that's a little behind schedule because of some of the utility relocations that have come, we've come across. That is just west of Sherman Street. Um, the main driver for this project is the asphalt rehab of Third Avenue. Um, Part of our asphalt rehab project includes concrete rehab, wherein we will uh, be going through the corridor, replacing any substandard curbing, gutter, sidewalks, curb ramps. Um, that also gets us, allows us to take on some safety improvements. So some of these safety improvements, and we'll see those going along, would be as part of that curb and gutter work or concrete rehab would be curb extensions. Um, one inter one uh, intersection, we're gonna be putting in a safety island in the middle. And you'll see that as we, as we uh, in the plot in the back. And then some traffic mitigation measures. See some stop control um, as well as, uh, uh, well, let me not get into it. Let me not ruin it first. Starting on, on Third Avenue, I'm gonna go kind of through the intersections that we are gonna be doing some improvements on. Um, going from kind of Main Street and then coming um, to the west at Pratt Street, we're gonna be undertaking some curb extensions. Uh, there will be a refuge island on the east side of Pratt. Um, crosswalk striping um, on all legs, um, and then enhanced signing um, where we'll have crosswalk signings as well as advanced signing on third to note the crosswalk uh, ahead. So um, this is probably a critical intersection in that. Um, this is one of the widest intersections. We want to narrow it up and have a, a, a shorter distance for pedestrians to cross, uh, making it safer. At Gay Street, we're going to re reestablish the signing and the markings replace the stop signs with newer reflective uh, stop signs and then enhance all of the markings. Uh, on Bowen Street, very similar crosswalk striping on all legs, um, enhanced signing as well. Um, down by Lincoln Street, um, we were looking, we're gonna be installing the flashing radar signs. Uh, the newer components are, of those also will be collecting data. Um, speed control has been a challenge on Third Avenue. Um, it is 25 miles per hour. So we're gonna start collecting that data so that we can establish if, if what we're doing is actually working. If it's not working, we'll have to add, you know, look, take another look at the corridor and add some more uh, tweaks here or there. Getting up to Sherman Street, on the north leg, we'll be looking at curb extensions, similar to the photo here. Um, we'll also be providing crosswalk striping across Third Avenue and stop control. It'll make it a three-way stop. On Francis Street on the north leg, one of the things we heard was access to the corridor during peak hours. That traffic on Francis tends to back up. Uh, some of our data shows that. We're gonna be providing stop control at that intersection as well. 
Farther down to the west on Vivian Street on the north leg, we're going to be providing crosswalk striping as well as additional signing for the crosswalk. Um, and just to the west, some flashing speed signs as well. Also, it'll be another data collection point. Down to Sunset Street, we'll be updating the signing um, and revising some of the crosswalk striping. Um, we're also going to be realigning that road striping um, to make it a better alignment when we did the paving um, a couple years ago on the west side of Sunset. The alignment was a, a little bit off. We'll also be looking at, at some of the uh, adjusting the bike lane and then re providing some signing to direct bikes down to um, down Sunset and over to Spruce. Um, one of the challenges with, we've been asked about bike lanes on 3rd. Um, 3rd is without doing any widening on 3rd, which we really did not want to go into um, for this project um, with the parking that is needed for at, at all along the corridor. It's very difficult to fit those bike lanes in. So one of the last things we'll be undertaking for the whole corridor is repaving the corridor. Um, that will extend from Main Street to Sunset. Uh, as part of that, we will be reducing the lane widths uh, in the travel lanes. That has a tendency to, to, to slow people down, force people to feel more, more constrained. We're also going to put in white striping on the outside to define the parking areas a little bit better. That will accentuate the, the reduced lane widths. So we don't just want to leave it there. Um, we also want to undertake some post-construction activities. Um, Third Avenue for a number of years um, has been a challenge. So um, part of what we're also going to do is we're going to reevaluate the site criteria um, and reevaluate the parking areas um, all along the corridor. Um, we're going to continue to monitor speeds and collect data on that. Um, one of the um, things we're, you know, our, our police department and public safety has been, and the city has been looking at is can we start um, undertaking some, not just monitoring speeds, but speed enforcement through, through some of these, these the, some of the new uh, equipment we can pick up. Right now we're challenged, there's some state statutes out there that are making it difficult. We're looking at that, um, and that is one thing we will continue to, to look at. And if it's viable, we would probably be undertaking it either here and, and then elsewhere throughout the city. And then again, anything we find adjustments as necessary. Um, so. That kind of concludes, oh, I did miss that last slide. Um, so we wanted to, to have an opportunity for you to, to, to express one last time. If you've got some ideas, we've got a role plot in the back, uh, similar to what we did before. Um, you know, we're looking at rehashing some of the signs, making sure we've got enough of the 25 mile per hour signs throughout the corridor. Um, but we also want to have you an opportunity, if you see stuff that we've missed, we'd like you to have an opportunity to go ahead and, and, and add some of those things. Um, that's why we wanted to get into an, like a kind of an open house format. You can talk one on one to staff. Um, but these are our contacts uh, for the various projects: um, the Boston Avenue Bridge uh, project, the Coffin Street Busway, um, Third Avenue. The last slide presentation had my name. Um, we now have a traffic engineering administrator, Kyle Haworth, who is here tonight. I'm sure he'll be happy to talk to you about any traffic issues. Um, and I want to just note that if you do try to reach out to Josh Sherman for Price Park. Josh has moved up to a, a different level, um, but you can still reach out to him and he'll direct you to the, the new project manager for Price Park. So with that, I think we had some questions on cards. We're collecting cards, which we'll bring to you. And if, if you want to give us your cards, we'll run them up to you. Um, Brenda and I can both take them. So, uh, got them. Let's start. I know I'll be available. I'll be available afterwards if you just want to talk to me directly. I'll just give you some of these. You can start. If it's easier, he'll just have you ask for it. Just and then collect them after he does. All right, so a couple of the questions involve some of the bike improvements. Uh, why no bike improvements to join up with, with Kaufman? Um, I think I kind of addressed that uh, originally. Um, the corridor itself is, is without, again, major improvements. 
um, widening out, and widening out would then either, you know, we, we'd end up having to, in some areas of the corridor, take property or have to purchase property from residents. That was never our, our goal. Um, and also, you know, while Third Avenue is an excellent east-west corridor, it's a lot of traffic. Um, it's, it's not in, within our current uh, roadway and multimodal plan, it is not listed as a corridor to have bike lanes. Um, with bikes redirected down Sunset, um, please reduce the speed limit to 20 miles per hour on Sunset. Um, is that north or south of 3rd for safety? Um, cert certainly, we can certainly look at. Um, what I want to also throw out, um, council will be or is directed staff to adopt, um, move forward with adoption of Vision Zero. Um, that is coming up on the meeting of the 25th. Um, can you explain what that is? I don't know what Vision Zero is. Well, Vision Zero is a, is a program. It's basically... Can you take the mic down? Okay, sorry. Vision Zero is mainly a, a program uh, wherein you set a goal to reduce critical injuries and fatalities on your roads to a z number of zero. So it, it is a, um, it is, it's got a, a number of stakeholders. You, 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 you meet, have a, a basically start with a task force that brings together public safety, engineering, planning, um, stakeholders in the, in the community to establish an action plan for how you can then start doing improvements and focusing on uh, either small scale and large scale improvements, re rethink how you, you handle traffic in your community. Okay. okay. You. And, and one of the tenets of Vision Zero um, is that you, most of your major accidents, fatalities, and severest injuries usually occur in, in areas where there's higher speed limits. Not always, but, but usually. And one of the tenets is lowering of speed limits. <laughs> How can we work together to get speed limits reduced to 20 miles per hour in neighborhoods? Um, that would be, I would argue, that would be, a, a, again, a component of Vision Zero. Okay, that, that neighborhood engagement, um, a discussion point. Um, can you answer that, sorry, in more detail? We, we really do want the speed limit to be 20 miles an hour since there are so many families Children. Cars do not stop for people standing on the corners of streets on 3rd Avenue. Yeah, like maybe before Vision Zero, since that sounds like a long process. So how and I, I, well then I, the only thing I could, I, I could say is you can request, you can get in front of city council, make a request. Okay, um, I would defer to our traffic engineer to a certain degree. I think there is some, without council action, there is some um, I believe some state statutes that limit it to 25 miles per hour. Um, I believe in residential streets. I could be wrong on that. I think the model vehicle code indicates that. Boulder has 20. I understand that, but they may have gone through a, a council action to do that. I'm sorry? We, we want to know how to work together to accomplish that. So are you saying email city council and that's it? No, I'm saying you can make that request. They can direct staff to look into it. Okay. But what staff? They, they, when I speak about staff, I speak about either planning or engineering staff, public works, okay, in our planning group. Are, are you all not public works? I am public works. I'm the director of public works. So um, can we add it? Sorry, can we just stay on this question? How have other communities lowered the speed limit that you've worked in in the past? I don't know how other communities have done it. I don't know what, what, long, what, we, what we would probably have to do in Longmont. Okay, and I don't know exactly the answer. I would have to get back to you with that. Okay, and if you'd like to fill out a comment card and put your email address on, we could get back to you with that information. Can we add a crosswalk at uh, the three-way stop on Francis? We can certainly look at that. Um, Kids go to the high school. Okay, I mean that, that's why we're we're here. We we can certainly look at it. I can't can't promise you. Um, well, they're all going like adjacent to the tower. Understand. To the when nearing third, can we please add a better a buffer between the sidewalk and third, um, where it is not like that now. 
Um, in some areas, there will be a buffer because there's parking. Um, in some areas, there would not be. There may not be adequate space for a buffer. Um, one of the areas I think we, we need to keep an eye on is while I would love to reduce lanes to 10 feet, we may have to do it to 12 on one side, simply because that's where people also will put their trash out and it becomes problems. So something we can look at. Uh, parking for or Speed Avenue, th Third Avenue speeding and safety are our biggest concerns. Parking for West Side Tavern, speed bumps to enforce speed limit. One of the challenges with speed tables on Third Avenue is Third Avenue um, is noted in our traffic mitigation uh, plan or program, um, neighborhood traffic mitigation, as a major collector. And with major collectors, we do not um, look to, to be putting in what we call vertical deflections or even horizontal deflections, which means chicanes and or speed tables. Um, part of, our, part of our, our issue with that is that we do not want to reduce the, speed, the, the response times for our, for our public safety group. And we have worked with them. Gay Street is another example of a collector where we would not want to do that. Um, part of the kind of where we want to look at in our plan is that we will continue to monitor the corridor and make those improvements or adjustments as necessary to keep the speeds down. What if crosswalks being marked on the street do a better job of helping us have safer crossing if you don't want to do all these other things to mitigate the speed? And in some of those areas we are providing those strike crosswalks. Well, I mean, just way more than what you proposed in this. Because it doesn't hurt anybody to have a crosswalk. If nobody's there, you don't have to stop in your car. But if there's a person there, you do have to defer to the human being. And, and, and some of those areas, I mean, we've looked at it. What we also look at is where, where are people crossing? We don't want to put a crosswalk at every intersection. So we try to plan it so it keeps people moving, but also we still have to move cars. It's still a residential neighborhood. I understand that. It's a major collector running through the city. So we're trying to adjust to move all modes of traffic in a safe and healthy manner. But not bikes. No, no, not bikes. No, because it's too narrow, it's, but it's not wide enough, right? We don't have like lanes because it's too narrow, but not wide enough. Yeah, it's too narrow. So crosswalks at 3rd and Bross, four-way stop at Pratt and 3rd. Drivers in the vast majority never stop for pedestrians trying to cross on 3rd Avenue. It really sucks. Um, the removal of speed, something of speeding is so out of control. Even you have some, even when you have speed signing. So as I indicated, part of the challenge is, is, is there is a lot of traffic on 3rd Avenue. We still want to keep it moving. Um, some of the crosswalks, I think we, we've provided a number of crosswalks in the area. Um, we're not going to put crosswalks at every intersection. Although vehicles are required to stop whether there is a marked or unmarked crosswalk in accordance with state law. But they don't. But they don't. They really don't at all. Here, you want to read that? You want to read that one about enforcement? Thanks. Can you guys hear me all right? Or do you need to hear you? All right. So the question was, please address traffic safety enforcement in the area of Central Elementary and Thompson Park. Uh, our traffic uh, officer is here also. But uh, I'll throw out uh, a question back. Uh, 7 a.m. in the morning, how many officers do you think are working in the city? Yeah, our minimum staffing is eight. With traffic, we have a couple extra traffic officers, so we have 10 officers. We have 340 miles of roadway, and so we have to, we can't be at one location at any given time. We don't have 340 cops. We have to move around the city and address everybody's safety concerns. Thompson Valley and Central are one of the spots that we try to hit. Uh, we get with our beat officers, try to encourage them to be there. Uh, but we also have 95,000 calls for service a year. And so domestics, car crashes, all those things play a factor in our ability to do proactive enforcement too. So uh, to do proactive enforcement, we need uh, unencumbered time. 
and our unencumbered time is getting less because our call volume is going up. And so we have to prioritize a lot of things. And so we try to get to all sections in the city. Uh, we do have, we've added some new technologies, at least in the traffic unit. Jim actually bought them for it for us, but we have a sign at uh, Main Street, Main Avenue. Uh, it's a flashing sign that you're going south and you see that it's a speed flashing sign. So it's capturing data for us. And uh, right now, the average speed on Main, so we want to guess what it is, what our site, it's a 25 mile an hour zone. 27 miles an hour. So I, I I was shocked too because I I was like we don't wow. want, we don't want statistical no. games we want yeah. you to do some enforcement right. and slow the traffic. I'm just pointing out not at seven in the morning, but for all, for all purposes you weren't here, Chief, when they doubled the size of the town. Mm -hmm. We need I'm more officers. We need more <laughs> officers. I, I, yeah, to enforce, I, but. Don't give yeah. us the 7 a.m. example to school. It's all day long. Right. So we, I, we understand you're going to have some, some yeah. data for us. But these excuses we've been hearing for years. Right. We need some enforcement. Give out some tickets on yeah. gang yeah. and third. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And we do give out tickets. Uh, and it, we got to balance it, right? I understand. So I understand. I, that's, I, I, we give out tickets on a regular basis. We, but we, it's hard. You got to be all over the city. Uh, we, we understand. So, I appreciate that. Right? We understand. Thank you, sir. So, uh, I got one more question. Uh, it says, what about truck traffic on Third Avenue? No enforcement. Uh, I personally sat up there one day for an hour by myself. I didn't see any trucks. I do know trucks come from east to west and turn on. Sometimes they miss Pratt Street, but. Uh, we do have officers that take, go down and do traffic enforcement. And I'll, I'll go back to the same thing. There's a lot of things that we have to enforce in this town, and these are several examples. And, and unfortunately, the, we have good staffing in our police department, but we can't put 340 officers on the street at a given time. So, uh, but I do. When you say they miss Pratt Street, are they supposed to? They're not supposed to hit Pratt Street, right? No, they're supposed to. Well, they, they turn. Uh, what is it? Third Avenue and Kaufman. I think they can go down Pratt too from Third. Uh, uh, Terry. Terry. No, it's, it's oh, Pratt. Terry. I'm sorry. That's the street. Yeah. Terry is the street. Yeah. Yeah. They hit that center. We said they're coming down Pratt. Right. Right. But they did not have barrier down. I mean, they not yeah. down. It, I mean, they were right in front, right in front of it. The house down from it, and I could, I could, I, I could check my watch by it. Yeah. So, oh, and a lot of them are the uh, uh, go up. The last time we did some, they were going up. Uh, is it Bowen Street today? There's a business on Bowen that they were trying to, you know, instead of just going to the truck route, we have a truck route there and they miss it sometimes. We went and talked to the business owner and talked to him about it. And I, I think that fixed it for a while, but yeah. it, it's, a, it's a constant. Yeah. I, I have. And you also do a good job. I, I don't think it's the police that I And, and, and we have to 
if, if you make it wider, people drive at speeds that are comfortable. And you can do all the enforcement in the world. If, if we made airport road 20 miles an hour because of its width, people will never, and we can have cops there, and, and it won't, it's the width. So our traffic engineers are very good at designing those streets. And so, but, you know, I, I don't know. That's what our traffic engineers, they're good at moving cars and, you know, we got to get people out of the neighborhoods, but that's that's one thing I don't see is people drive at a speed and it feels safe to them, and all the enforcement it makes it really difficult. So anyway, and, and we we do uh, Main Street, 17th Avenue, Airport Road, Kid Pratt Boulevard. Those are all kind of major streets that people use in our city. And surprisingly, those are all uh, our crashes are too. Any major thoroughfare with major cars going through, we have crashes, and it's it's yeah, we want it to be it's a complex problem. It shouldn't be. Yeah. 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 We want to walk to go out to dinner, and we want to walk to go get drinks, and we don't want to worry about dying crossing the street or dropping our kids off. Nobody wants. That. Why isn't the street designed for that then? This new, the new plan, right? I think this. I think we're we're constrained by existing infrastructure. We're doing what we can. It was never originally designed. Um, the the city's over what 150 years old, um, and has a series of developments on and on. It is not going to be a quick process to redesign our streets. Okay, Vision Zero will take um, 15 to 20 years to finally reach that point. What you'll find is that most cities have not, even after doing it for a number of years, have not got to that point. Um, it will be, it will take an effort, not just from city staff, but from residents like you coming to meetings, coming in and joining the task force. Um, it is not going to be um, done overnight. John, I can talk to you after the meeting. <laughs> um, I'm going to change subjects real quick and answer a couple of questions um, regarding Boston Avenue. Um, one of the projects we have not, did not note here um, is an extension of, that is currently underway, is an extension of Boston Avenue um, across the railroad tracks. Um, we are currently about to apply to the PUC for that application. Um, that is, um, if we get, if the application is successful and they agree with us, um, we can then begin um, design and finish up uh, that project hopefully in 2024, 2025. Um, part of the, that is a strategy um, that is tied to the first and main transit station in an effort to um, start moving buses through there. Um, the Boston Avenue project, will the Boston Avenue project divert commercial traffic to 3rd? Um, 3rd Avenue is posted as no truck traffic. Um, what I would offer up is that we would have to do some more enforcement. Um, not just from public safety, but our staff as well. Um, when we undertake a project in the area, we, we direct our contractor that he, they are not and their drivers are not to be moving trucks down certain roadways in the city. Uh, we would just have to enforce that a little bit more. Um, but it is not our intention, um, if there are temporary closures of Boston while a contractor is bringing things in, um, there will be a detour, but it will not go down 3rd Avenue. Want to read a couple of yours? Yep. Hey, everyone. Um, Sure, we've been talking about a little bit. Um, I'm Kyle Howarth. I'm the traffic engineering administrator for the city. Um, simpler to talk, I'm the traffic engineer for the city. Um, so I'll be handling all future um, requests and issues um, regarding speeding, um, traffic safety, pedestrian safety, um, as well as we're going forward with Vision Zero and how we're developing more of a multimodal uh, network for the city to make getting across the city and not in a vehicle safer. Um, so our first question. Um, I will trouble reading the, the text, but um, I think it says with the width winding as you approach Sherman Street going east, how the road narrows down a few feet. 
Um, why wasn't the road widening those portions? Um, the hardest part with widening roads is it exponentially increases the cost of construction project. Even to do that section, we're talking it could be half a million dollars plus to make those changes to widen the roadway by a couple feet. Plus, it's going to be extreme impacts to the area. Um, so a project right between the water line and the paving, you know, a few month project will end up being, could be a year project by the time you get the grading, utility relocations. Um, so unfortunately, the way the city was, as Jim alluded to, it's a very old city. Um, and unfortunately, it wasn't really planned for um, that size of traffic. Um, and that's why we're definitely looking into diverting uh, throughway cars who aren't living in that local area to our major arterials to alleviate traffic. Um, so, but unfortunately how Third Avenue stands, we have to work around what we got and that's why we're kind of improving with the, uh, it's called a road diet as a, a traffic calming measure. Um, we've implemented in other places, other engineers have implemented in places. Uh, in my own experience, um, just by narrowing down the lanes and areas, uh, I've seen a 25% reduction in speeds. And that's just psychological. Um, it's something that we can, again, put down relatively fast. And it's something that makes most of the public um, slow it down. And then the, the few people we have, we can target those and not be just running around the city trying to chase. Um, sometimes it's perceived speed. Um, but sometimes the actual speeders, we can dedicate more resources to tracking down who's going through the areas. Um, so with that question, Money is always a, a constraining factor when it comes to when we're designing our projects. Um, we got two questions kind of regarding uh, stop control around the area. Um, so the first one is consider making Bowen and Third a four way stop. Um, during the design process, that was considered. Uh, one thing we do have issues with is we have consecutive stop signs. And I'll touch on Francis Street and Sherman Street um, after this too. Um, the more stop signs you have, the less compliance you'll have at those stop signs as generally drivers get more and more impatient with actually following the signage. Um, so the best way is to make people slow down is make them feel like they're not actually going slow, they're just driving. Um, so we try to avoid having se se segments, it's not a word, but back-to-back um, -back stop signs. In the case of Sherman and um, Francis Street, uh, Francis Street um, does connect to a lot of schools, um, and we already have bike lanes set up in that area, and we're looking to improve those even further in the future, along with the Vision Zero program. Um, so we're predicting that there's going to be a lot more mu multimodal traffic coming down to Francis, where you can see a lot of pedestrian traffic, a lot of bicyclists, and what that's going to help is if those areas are being more used by alternative transportation, it changes the feeling of the neighborhood, it changes the community of the neighborhood to know when you're actually in this part of town, people are slowing down because they know there's tons of foot traffic. Um, so that's something we're trying to definitely promote in the city um, through striping and signs um, and stuff that we can put out readily available and something that we can maintenance and keep up in the future. So we're not making a thousand promises and then the maintenance becomes way too much um, that we can't keep up with our promises. What's a safe east-west corridor for bicycles? Um, so that's something we're addressing because um, as most of the, I would say, the United States uh, was very car-centric, um, very focused on having the car go wherever it needs to go. Um, so we'll be addressing um, adding bike lanes throughout the city and then the, the ultimate goal is going to have, you can literally bike or walk anywhere in the city without having something end. So we're, we're going to remove all our crosswalks to nowhere, our bike lanes to nowhere, um, add signage throughout the city to really show that you can transport the city without a bike, or without, sorry, without a vehicle, um, and then feel safe doing it as well. That's important. Yes. One does not feel safe. Yep, and it starts off with building the infrastructure behind it um, to encourage it. So as we get more people, hopefully it steam rolls in. Um, this area is really great. I came from kind of the Denver metro area where cars are very ingrained into the, the community. Um, it's really hard to get people to bike. Um, but here is great because between um, Lamont, Boulder, and the surrounding counties, there is a very strong biking uh, community as well as other uh, modes of transportation are starting to really take off. Um, so there's definitely 
way more investment where we can spread the word a lot better and have more people in the streets using those transportation methods. And that hopefully brings more people on board to um, not drive. I'm out of questions. All right, next question. Could you add more crosswalk lines at intersections between Gay and Main? Um, we can certainly look at that, um, although I believe that um, there's only one or two intersections that would, would uh, are there. We've already we added. We aren't doing, which is the one we want, which is cross, because you're doing everything else, but you're skipping that particular one. We can certainly look at it. That's why, we, that's why we're here. So you can add it as a comment, and we can certainly see if we can provide the, that crosswalk striping. Um, can you describe the enhanced sign, signage at 3rd and Pratt? Basically, that, that is, is newer signs that have a higher, higher level of reflectivity, as well as advanced signing. Um, we did not include RRFBs at that intersection. We had originally int intended to do that. As we looked at it, um, because there are two crossings of third, it's very difficult to provide those RRFBs without causing confusion for drivers should people be deciding to cross there on both legs at the same time. Um, RRFBs are also best used at mid-block crossings, uh, which is similar, say, on Main Street, which is where we are currently planning on installing them. RRFBs are, I'm sorry, okay, yeah, that's the engineer in me. Um, RRFBs is rectangular reflect, reflecting flashing beacons, is that right? You missed a rapid. <laughs> rapid, rectangular flashing beacons. Rapid, rectangular flashing beacons, thank you. What is that? Is that like the button you push? You push a button, flashes, it flashes a, a kind of a high profile light. Um, we're, we install, installed them on 9th Avenue, the crossing I think at the oligarchy. They're further, we put them on, one on a couple on Mountain View. Um, we're going to be doing one on 17th shortly. Um, so, um, so my question, just to that, that was my question, um, and just to, just to follow up and ask why, you, you, you said it, you said it was better used at other types of intersections. Hey, one thing that I would say is we cross going uh, north at that intersection every day to take our children to school, and there's parking within about 30 feet of that intersection, and because of that parking, in the morning, you get parking all, all down that strip. You can't see the cars coming and they can't see you until you've stepped off of the curb into the intersection. So even if you put your crosswalk there that you have listed, when you go to step off of that, they still can't see that there's someone in the crosswalk because of that parking. So basically it's, because of that parking, it's the, the view is inhibited. I mean, at that point, people are racing towards Maine. By the time they've cleared all the all the narrower streets and the curve, yes. they're coming and they're 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 on a mission to get to Main Street at that point. So basically, what you're what you're dealing with is you're dealing with me and my son as we're walking to Central School have to step out four steps before someone can even see us in the intersection. I've had people slam on their brake. I mean, with no with no crosswalk, but for all the all the good the crosswalk is going to do. Mm. I mean, I'm I'm not impressed without the without the the RRFB. Yeah, I mean, flashing I'm, would be so much safer or to no parking on third. Or or no parking down that road to to yeah exactly to to give that to give more of a view to allow for that because if there's not a button there that I can because the initial plan when we were when it was described to us by your office was included the the RRFBs and essentially as far as I'm concerned that's the perfect that's a perfect plan if we can put them at every intersection I would do it but if we can put them at that intersection because like I said you've got a you've got a blind curve there parking down the street and when you go to step off of that you're taking your life in your hands and whether my kids are whether my kids are walking to school or they're walking to Thompson Park every time they step off of that curve I'm terrified that they're going to get nailed. And that's the intersection that Tony Uley got killed in. And you've heard that, you've heard that, you've heard that idiom before, you know, how many people have to die? It should be zero. Absolutely. And that intersection has had someone die, and my kid crosses it every single day, two, maybe three times. And I can't tell you that, that I'm okay with just having a crosswalk there and no, no flashing sign to, to stop people as they're flying down that road. They fly from Gay, the stop lot, the stop intersection at Gay. From that point on, 
people accelerate very quickly because they have no impediment until they get to, to Terry. 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 Exactly. And they are assholes. I'm sorry <laughs> to say it, but they are assholes. And I have nearly been hit by cars. My neighbor here has nearly been hit by cars. It is unacceptable because this is a residential neighborhood. It should be treated as such. The cars coming through do not live there. They do not care. Well, so, and as I said, with the flashing with the flashing signal, basically you're not inhibiting the traffic unless there's a unless there's a pedestrian. That's there. right. So at that point, you've you've caused no slowdown to that flow of traffic without a pedestrian being there. And since the pedestrian has a right of way anyway. That's when they deserve it most, and, right. and that should stop all of that traffic anyway. 100%. That whole neighborhood going down from from Third to Second Avenue on Pratt and is now full of children that walk. There's a bus, actually a middle school bus stop in the middle of that, where the kids going to Westview go to. So they're having to cross downward to go into that neighborhood, cross there at Pratt or or other streets along there. And then anyone going to Central is going north across that intersection. And I'm telling you, north across that intersection is terrible. Yeah. Mm. I mean, there should be no reason that this is an unreasonable request. And I don't understand why the answer to us in this very meeting would be, we will absolutely put that at that intersection because there is no hindrance to any of your other objectives other than you would save lives. And like I said, zero. That's the number of people that should have to die at that intersection, and we're already past that. So, I mean, I, I, as far as I'm concerned, if someone else is hit by a car in that intersection and you don't put that RRFB in there, it's on I hold hands. all of you responsible, anyone in that office. I got, a, I got a question for you on that. Is Do those things necessarily have to have the loud vocal thing that says cars may not stop or or anything. Can they be quiet? It's crazy making for those who live right next to you. Part of the part of the noise component is usually it's an ADA component, American with Disabilities. Yeah. If we have a a, a, a frequent user who is hearing impaired, uh, we have installed them um, at their request. I see. But it doesn't so, have to be. Does not have to be. Can you guys you. please repeat the question because we are filming this and people who are watching later won't hear the question you're answering. Can you just summarize that real quick? The, the question involved RRFBs and whether they had to have a vocal component to them. And the answer basically is, is no, they don't. They're done at a request of a maybe a hearing impaired resident who, who frequents that area of the city. The parking uh, curtailment that you yeah. guys were talking about on the west side of Sherman or on the west side of Third towards Sherman, that's been very helpful. Yeah, I got got it, John. No, um, I'm getting there. there. <laughs> yeah, and we'll, the, uh, we will we will be looking at the, the the parking area after we've established most of the signing on the project and look at it. Um, there are some adjustments and changes, um, so we don't have a plan yet as to whether that's going to stay in place or be removed. Um, but we will, um, that still has to be evaluated. Well, as a study for these folks, it seems like it's been effective on the west side of and, that curve. So right, and, and that for Third and Pratt, curb extensions you know, help to slow traffic down. They do push, they do provide a safer haven for residents. So before we entertain an RRFB, we're going to be installing our, the curb extensions as per the plan. And again, so as I indicated, you're saying, you're saying no then to the RRFB? Why? Are I'm you? saying not right now. Well, no, I don't, I I'm saying don't. I'm going I'm to do a less expensive treatment that we think will that we think will work. Less expensive in an intersection where someone was killed. That's ridiculous. You're, that's what you're telling me. Is, 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 we'll, we'll you know, pass to be, a hat and raise the money. To be, to be honest, we put out flowers and memorials there, but you know the best memorial right there would be to make that the safest intersection in town. I'd love to understand the resistance here on your part. That's are they, uh, if, uh, one more question on the RRFB. All right, we're, we're, we, the, or do they, or do they have to, do they need buried cables beneath the ground? They need a buried cable beneath the ground? Yes, they do. Okay, then, then wouldn't now be the All right, at this, at this point, um, we, we were taking questions via cards. We're not taking that's, questions that's from the audience. I know. Okay, I understand that. And you can, we we're happy to talk to you afterwards. That was how we laid this out. So work on third um, will actually be starting 
um, I believe the second, third week in May towards Main Street. We're going to be working on curb, the curb extensions and curb work. So you'll start to see some of that activity. Um, we're not anticipating road closures per se till we get to the paving portion of it. So um, I'm not, I'd have to get, if you, the person who had a question regarding uh, week by week closures, uh, block by block, could you see me later and then we'll try to get your contact information. I'll have to get you information as to how we're going to notify the public of those changes and adjustments. And with that, um, we had a couple of questions that were off topic. Um, staff will be available to answer them. Um, so we'd be happy to, to chat with you about those things. Um, we'll be here for till seven. So thank you very much.